back here with Van Sykes. And in the South, the, most of us grew up eating fried bologna at some right. time. Fried so bologna. it actually was called bologna. Right. But we all say bologna. I, yeah, it must have happened in the South, is yeah. my speculation. Must have, but <laughs> the name is bologna because it's Italian, right? That's right. Uh huh. And it's, it's, not like a giant hot dog, but it is kind of like a giant hot okay. dog. It's cured, you know, like a hot dog. Now, if you, people at home looking at that might not automatically go, that's bologna, but it is. So yes. let's take this shot over here, and he's going to show us the difference in what we're talking about. Yeah. So this is what you'd buy in the store regularly. This is what you get, would get in the store. Well, so look at the difference in the uh, circumference of the meat. Now, this is the same cost per pound. Okay. But you can see how much more if you buy it in a stick I've like that. I've never seen it like that. Some of y'all may have, but we've never. I've never seen it like you, that. Most but delis will have it. Store. Yes, you can. It's in a five-pound stick is what they call it. This one here. It's much more economical. Okay. Plus, this is what the industry would call a thick slice. <laughs> but a van would call, you know, that a thick slice <laughs> right there. So, All right, well, show us how to do so it. Here's, so you buy this in the store. Buy it in the store. So let's okay. jazz it up a little bit. All so. Right. Essentially, you, if I told you to season a hot dog, there's no way you could do it. You get the flavor when you put stuff on it. But what we're going to do to get a little flavor is we're going to score this. Normally, I wouldn't have this giant knife, but I left my <laughs> scoring a large knife. knife. Okay. Uh, but you see, I'm cutting diamonds. I'm going out. I'm going in. I'm going out. So scoring out. means what? You're allowing... Scoring means I'm, I'm piercing it, the skin enough mm -hmm. so that I can get something to go into it. Okay. Because once it's cured and sealed like a hot dog like that, mm -hmm. you really can't get anything in it unless you pierce this. But all it is, I'm just breaking the skin. That's, that's all I'm doing. But they so, did say you don't have to do that. No, you, you don't could, have to do that. Economically, you could buy this and just fry it. You can buy it and fry it in the pan, and okay. when you cut it thick, you don't have to put that little cut on it. All right, so, so what, do you, what did you do to this it? This is finished product. Now, to get this, the grill marks, you see how the scoring looks after you're done. Mm -hmm. But the, I found this <laughs> thing's <laughs> round, man, and it rolls all over you the place. Careful. So I can stick this rotisserie fork in it, and I can make quarter turns okay. like this. Is this on the grill? Yes, this okay. is on your preheated uh, smoker or gas grill okay. at 200 degrees. Okay. About every five minutes, quarter of a turn, quarter of a turn, use a rotisserie fork. Um, How long does that take? How long are you doing that? I did this one in 20 minutes, about five-minute turns so you, in a low temperature. So you got to spend some time with it. you got to yeah. invest. Or you'll have yeah. that like, burnt hot dog look. <laughs> we don't know, want which, that. Which, don't which want ain't that. bad. All right, you know, so but. this comes out looking like that once you've done that for 20 minutes. Right, right. And so now what you can do, folks, is at home you make a sandwich, wrap it back up. Make a sandwich for breakfast, wrap it back up. You can just keep using this. It's a cured piece of meat. So it would not keep cooking. in the fridge safely. It'll stay safely. Okay. We're not cooking anything. We're reheating something that's cured. But I found a way to get a little bit extra flavor right. with this little dry rub right here. Okay, so the dry rub is what you put on there. That, I, I rubbed it in mustard mm -hmm. first. I didn't want to do it because you couldn't see sure. the lines. Because mustard makes things stick to it. It's real tacky. And then I put my famous rub that's always on my website. And then I put a little tahine, which is a Mexican spice with mm -hmm. red chili and uh And that's before uh, you put it on the grill. Right. And, okay. then, and then when it gets hot, this opens up and all that starts going inside. Go inside. Okay, yeah. so we slice it open. Yep. As you we can see here. Got us a big slice like all right. this. All right. all right. The way I make a sandwich, of course, I'll make it any way you want me to. <laughs> but I do mustard, pickle, and then I'm... Take my bologna when it's on the grill, and I use my barbecue sauce. Show them one piece and put it on the grill and see. Are we still yeah, hot? Yeah, right here. Okay. Well, I turn so the heat back that's, a little. You can see how I big it is. I want to get though. that good and hot, mm -hmm. but I use my sauce to do it with. Okay. But you, back can see and forth. How, you can see how thick that is. Yes. I go back and forth with the sauce, and then get this okay. real steamy hot, and then your cheese will melt on there. And I've learned that if you put the cheese on the top, it don't slide off when you try to eat it. And I can't believe I didn't figure that out until now. All right. Repeat that again. If you put the cheese on the top, yeah. like that, the top don't slide off when you eat it. Oh, well, there it uh, Yeah, I can't believe it took me a long time to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we, we, we talked yeah. about this. You put a little bit of mayo before you do your bread. Yeah, I like to toast with mayonnaise. You see how pretty it is. It makes it, it, makes it a really pretty color, doesn't and, it? And there's a little flavor to it. And you don't use a lot. It's real thin, like what your doctor would tell you to put on your sandwich thin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
you know what I mean? So we're feeling better about ourselves yeah, right. just a little bit. <laughs> All right, so show people what you've put on there. So you've either put pickles on there or your coleslaw. Yeah, what I did, I like this flavor profile. I've got mustard pickle, the bologna seasoned up, mm -hmm. American cheese. Uh, my barbecue sauce is grilled into it on the flat top. And then I put a little scoop of coleslaw on there, um, just about one ounce yeah. of coleslaw and that little sweetness of that slaw works with the pickle and the mustard kind of got it all Ooh. going together there you all know? right so as we wrap up over here yeah so kelly i don't know how much time we have left but um you can take a look that it works great to cut it into these you can use it for sandwiches. like parties i mean we still got a little summer left you know so this makes like a great summer thing where you can cut these up into little sandwiches mm -hmm. And, and like I say, they can just kind of sit there. Uh, you got a cured piece of meat, you're safe. Remember folks, you're not cooking this, you're just seasoning it up and reheating it. I just think so. that's really cool idea if you guys wanted to try that, if you like. But, so this has chicken, pork. Yeah, this is a, these stick bologna have a little more meat, a little leaner than this type. This has probably more pork in mm -hmm. it. This has more chicken, okay. pork, beef all together. The stick bologna is just a little higher quality. Same price per pound, much more yield out of this. All right, very good. Yeah. Van Sykes, uh, is this going to be at the restaurant for a little bit? Yes, I'm going to have bologna sandwiches for a couple weeks. Come see us and have one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Really great segment.